Hi, and welcome to another edition of Bauer Business Bites. My name is David Tai. I'm the MD of Bauer Media here in Northern Ireland. Uh, over the weeks, we've been talking to business leaders and getting their insight and opinion in the current situation. And today, I'm really pleased to welcome Stephen Bogan, who's the MD of Genesis Advertising, to the program. Hi, Stephen. Hi, David. Uh, how are you doing? How are you today? I'm 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 well. I'm well. Hopefully, my kids will keep quiet in the background, but you know, let, let's wait and see. It's fine. It's no problem at all. Um, Stephen, just for those who don't know, tell us a little bit about Genesis Advertising. Um, we're a marketing communications agency. We've been around for the guts of uh, thirty years. Um, we have four divisions: um, advertising, digital design, and uh, consulting. And we work across a wide range of, of, of public and uh, private sector clients in Northern Ireland, the, the island of Ireland, and the UK. We work with Spar, and then further afield, we help market Northern Ireland uh, globally with Invest NI. Um, and then we've got you know fairly fairly deep ranging experience, wide ranging experience in a number of business sectors such as tourism, um, energy, manufacturing, grocery, retail, financial services, and a lot of FMCG experience. Um, we are, I believe, um, the you know the most awarded agency over the last few years in in, in Northern Ireland uh, with about forty awards in the last five years. And that's not about self congratulation. Um, it's really based on the research that award winning work when compared to non award winning work is, is four times more effective, at least four times more effective in the market. So we think it's a good benchmark to try and aim for on behalf of our clients to kind of you know, get get campaigns of, of, of that caliber if, if we can. That's a great overview. Thanks for that. Um, obviously, you're dealing with a lot of clients and you've had a lot of experience as a company. So what are in these unique times, what are the learns uh, now that you can share with our audience about what you think brands should be doing, accepting that we have got many different types of brands in many different situations? Is there anything that you can share that's um, kind of common? Yeah, it's probably about it's probably about principles uh, more than anything else. So, you know, I think right now brands need to be they need to be relevant as they've always had to be. They need to be relatable um, and they also need to be true to themselves in, in terms of how they go about being relevant and, uh, and relatable so that they're not accused of sort of you know, exploiting a situation or jumping on a bandwagon. And I think brands are doing this right now um, through a mixture of deeds that they're performing and also then how they're, they're communicating. So obviously some brands have a natural advantage right now um, some sectors have been less affected anything kind of tech related uh, grocery retail etc who, who have still got the distribution channel into their into their consumer base but even there they have to still compete with each other um, you know you look at mobile you look at EE with the Kevin Bacon ad which is one of the the top performing ads over the last um, kind of period uh, when they're offering six months of free data to the NHS so that's that's a grand gesture that sets that brand apart in a category that's still probably fairly well inoculated from what's going on. Um, some brands are, are adapting the product and service, and this is almost like a, a win-win of, of revenue and relevance. So you look at O'Neill's sportswear, what they've done, you know, they, they have they've, they've sort of opened up into PPE and, and, and kind of retooled a little bit. And you're seeing distilleries making ha hand sanitizer, uh, you know, focusing away maybe from their, their normal day job of making gin and things like that. So. You know, that, that's a powerful statement to, to their customers. It's a very useful thing that they're doing uh, right now, as well as opening up a new revenue channel. Um, we're seeing brands also, yeah, we're, well, we're also seeing brands, and this is a really important point for anyone watching, I suppose, brands are innovating through opening up new channels. Um, you know, distribution has been a bit badly disrupted, obviously, as we know over the, over the recent period, and, and it could continue to be disrupted. Um, you know, we will have restrictions lifted. There will be new freedoms, but I've seen research which you know, might put a question mark to some degree at least as to whether people are willing to exercise those new freedoms. So it's really important that brands kind of meet their customer halfway and possibly even more so. So we have an example of one of our clients, Henderson Food Service, who uh, normally would supply grocery retailers, but also cafes and restaurants, who've opened up their wholesale operation up at Molusk into a click and collect business, which is you know, really useful for people you know, right now. I think the other thing that brands are doing are they're engaging, as I gave the example of EE earlier, in, in gestures, useful gestures of, of varying kind of shapes and sizes. And you know, you're seeing a huge plethora of brands getting involved with healthcare workers and offering them free stuff or, or deeply discounted stuff. Um, and that's a very, very crowded market right now. Um, but others are getting engaged in 
you know, other things, other areas. So local community, for instance, and that sense of community cohesion and helping out local communities. And again, just turning to one of our own clients, Henderson's, who own the Spar, Eurospar and Vivo brands in Northern Ireland. You know, a lot of their retailers and a lot of the stores now are offering um, deliveries, home deliveries to vulnerable people in the community. Now, that's not a profitable um, operation for them, but it is the right thing to do right now. And it also makes good, it talked about the need to be true to yourself. It makes good on the Spar brand promise of being there for you. So what better way to be there you know, for your communities? And then finally, I think beyond just the deeds, brands are also trying to find really useful ways and relevant ways and relatable ways to communicate. So you know, there's a number of themes right now that are emerging, which reflect our human needs um, through, through, through this period. You know, there's things like comfort seeking and reassurance. We can all identify with that. That's something that we all feel um, are feeling at the moment and brands are tapping into that through, you know, the sanctuary of, of the home and Ikea is, you know, is big in that space at the moment. Nostalgia is big at the moment. Uh, we're harking back to kind of easier times, maybe, um, you know, pleasant, more pleasant times in our heads. Uh, and you're seeing a lot of brands that are jumping on, on that kind of trend. Um, so you've seen Budweiser remake too of its seminal campaigns with Waz Up 20 years on and also uh, Real Men of, of Genius. Togetherness and connection is a big, big kind of theme and a lot of brands are, are, are in that space at the moment. Um, I saw a piece of content from Colgate um, and really they're just tapping into an insight um, and getting credit for tapping into that insight where we're doing what we're doing now, we're, we're in video conferencing and what are we doing video conferencing? And when it's going well, we smile and Colgate's basically just made a piece of content around that and saying, look, you know, we'll keep your smile looking good as you video conference and do what you have to do to get through life. And there's another really important theme around brands enabling us to enjoy life regardless of the restrictions that you know we face. And there is a brand in London, which I really loved, Earl of East, which makes candles. They've brought out a range of candles called Scents of Normality with candle names such as, you know, the local, the cinema and the festival. And they're just trying to kind of tap into, again, the stuff that we're missing right now in a kind of a really witty and, and quirky way. And then finally, I think you know, one of the really important themes is this idea of rediscovering life's simple pleasures. Um, and, and I suppose, you know, the, the, the sort of what's really important in life, which we've all had a chance to step back and reassess. Um, and that's an area that we're trying to tap into with um, some content we've just created for SPAR, which is running out across the UK. And again, aims to make good on its brand promise of, of being there for you, being there for the community. So again, it's really important that, you know, brands do this in a way that is aligned to you know, the kind of the brand code that they actually have and their, and their brand positioning. So what I would say is anyone watching this, I would say draw inspiration from what others are doing out there. There's, you just have to Google some of this stuff and you'll get a you know, really good sense of, of the sorts of ideas and the sorts of responses the brands are coming up with. And that can spark all sorts of ideas for yourself as well. Amazing. And uh, some great examples. Thank you for sharing those with us. That's uh, really, really inspirational. Um, we are coming rapidly to the end of Bauer Business Bites. It, could you distill some advice for brand owners who may be watching this? If you could distill something right down for them to summarize as we come to a close, what would that advice be as we move into the next stage? Yeah, I would say, you know, explore, I suppose, how you can be relevant um, and, and the way you're going to do that is trying to root that in kind of consumer needs and they can be functional consumer needs, if you give examples of earlier, or emotional consumer needs. And that's about trying to think forwards. It's about trying to scenario plan and trying to explore how you can maximize your relevance as this situation evolves and emerges. And part of that is also having agility. You need to build agility into the business. Um, you know, we've seen very fast turnaround times. We're, we're, we've made TV ads in days. We've made radio ads and digital content in hours. And we worked on the coronavirus information campaign for the executive office, and that was cracked as a creative approach in 24 hours over a weekend. So that's the new normal, and you've got to be able to respond and react to the, the circumstances and the opportunities as they present themselves. And um, I think also, you know, think about the deeds as well as how you communicate based on some of the themes we talked about. Try to be true to your brand as we talked about the importance of, of being authentic as a brand and not overstepping the mark. And also see the opportunity right now. Um, you know, we do, we are hearing some words talked around downturn, economic downturn, etc. And that's a great opportunity to gain market share because share voice, which is correlated to share market, will never be as easy easily got uh, because you know media deflation will mean it's cheaper to buy that share voice. And the fact that some of your competitors might be put off right now can give you a great opportunity and, 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 a, and a great kind of position to steal market share, which is also ultimately going to guarantee future profitability. 
Stephen Bogan, MD from Genesis Advertising, thank you for being our guest today.